Hey there, Saki here from Saki Tech, and in today's video, I would like to demonstrate some of the top features of iOS 11 running on an iPhone 7 Plus, although everything equally applies to the iPhone 7 and even the lower models. So let's dive in and find out what's going on. And after you watch the video, go ahead and drop comments down below on how you feel about this update, whether you're an iPhone user or an Android user. All right, so the first thing I wanna talk about is the new control center, which has been redesigned. So let's pull it up from the bottom and see what we get. And that's the new thing that we have going on. Now, normally, knowing iOS 10, you had three different screens that you would swipe over to each one of them. In this new version in iOS 11, what they did was they consolidated everything together. So you've got your quick toggles here, uh, you have your brightness slider, your volume slider over here. You've got your music player on the top over there. And you've got all these other things uh, that you would usually have on the control center on separate screens all together in one place. They even put a small icon at the bottom here for the home kit. Now, if you do have a 3D touch enabled iPhone, you can perform 3D touch onto any one of these buttons to get even more functionality. For example, the home kit button that allows you to control the lights and the music and the doors in your house, you can press and hold and it expands into a larger menu and from here I can turn on the living room lights or turn them off or whatever, right? Uh, same thing with the uh, brightness sliders. If I tap on this, the brightness slider expands and I can actually control this much easily uh, from this side. Again, the same thing with the volume controller. Uh, same thing with the flashlight. So that's a flashlight level one, level two, three, four, five. Actually, probably this is one, two, three, four. So four levels of flashlight can be controlled from here. And you got the clock, uh, I'm sorry, the timer. You can set the timer from here, four minutes, five minutes, uh, 10 minutes, and then just click start. If you do that, it will show the timer on the screen. Let's go back. Uh, that's the calculator application. If you tap this, you can launch it or copy the last result and uh, you have the camera from here, tap that. You can take a selfie, record a video, record a slow motion video, or take a portrait. But these are the uh, things that were already in iOS 10. They were not as refined, but now the thing is, like I said, everything is in one screen, and you can also press and hold on anything uh, to get more functionality out of, this, out of these, uh, these uh, buttons. So again, if I go back into the control center, and if I'm actually playing some kind of music, uh, you can see the music controller, I can uh, pause this, uh, I can play it, I can go to the next track, or I can press and hold and perform a 3D touch, and that expands the view. I can even control the volume uh, track somewhere in the music, I can see the album art, and I can also tap this button here, which allows me to stream my music uh, to connected Apple TV devices or perhaps other Bluetooth speakers. So all these options are available. They've just been uh, redesigned and I actually do like this new redesign. And the other thing I want to talk about is if you pull down the notifications panel, the today's screen, it actually shows you a music controller if that's something that you're actually doing right now. Let me stop playing that music so that thing uh, hopefully disappears. Let me exit the music application for a minute. Let me pull this down again. Now, as you can see, it looks just like the lock screen. And if you wanna access the remaining notifications, this is the current notification that I just got five minutes ago. If I wanna see all the other notifications, they're actually neatly hidden. So all I have to do is pull it up a little bit and they all show up as you can see. Absolutely fantastic. And of course, if I go over to this side, uh, I still have access to all my widgets. I don't have any widgets, I removed them. Uh, recently, but if I do want to add them, you can just add the widgets from here as you can see. Okay, so let's uh, go back here again, go down. It's actually great that this looks like the uh, actual lock screen. So if, I, if the phone was locked, you get the same experience. Okay, and again, if I want to see the uh, notifications, I just pull up. Again, this is a very, this is the most new version of iOS 11, uh, so things are probably going to change but so far, this is what we have for the control center and the today's screen. And also, of course, there's some slight adjustments to the overall interface. It looks the same almost as iOS 10. You've got the apps and everything. But uh, when you are outside and when you are trying to unlock your phone, for example, let's go back here. Now, let's swipe this up. Let's try to go into the phone. Now, as you can see, 
uh, the lock screen where you put your password and it looks a little bit different, it looks a little more translucent uh, than previously. Okay, so they have made some modifications and these things are gonna get changed even more until they're fully refined, but you can see some subtle changes to the interface even when you look over here. So that's definitely a different kind of interface. One more thing that we have is we have the ability to enable the one-handed mode for the keyboard. So basically if I go and uh, go to my text messages, here's a text message that's waiting there. Uh, let's see, this is the iPhone 7 Plus, so it's larger than the iPhone 7 and sometimes it is hard to operate this uh, with one hand uh, using your thumb to type on the keyboard. So whether you're left-handed or right-handed doesn't matter. Uh, you can actually change the size of this keyboard. What you want to do is, you see that little world icon right there? Just tap and hold on it. Brings up a menu. At the bottom, you can actually do a less, uh, left justification of the keyboard, which makes the keyboard more compact. So you can uh, to reach the whole thing with just your thumb if you're holding the phone with one hand. And of course, if you're going to flip it over to the other side, you just press and hold this again, tap it, and now it's uh, right justified, all right? And then press and hold one more time, and you can bring it to the middle if you want the regular keyboard. Not too bad. Another thing is when you go into the iMessages, and if you look at the bottom here, as you can see, they've changed the way uh, the apps appear in iMessages at the bottom of the screen. Now they're actually lined up next to each other. And if I when I tapped on them, it actually brings uh, makes the screen a little bit larger, but I can just go through all these guys and access any one that I want for the iMessages. So if I go over here, it's gonna take me to the App Store. Uh, if, I go to, if I wanna go to the music, I can go to the music and start playing something from here. Not too bad, so this, this is some, uh, a minor adjustment here to the iMessages. Makes it a little bit more efficient to get to the apps. And of course, another thing that is new is the App Store. So they actually went in there and they redesigned the App Store. So if I go to the shopping over here and launch the App Store, uh, you'll see a brand new interface. First and foremost, you get a today screen uh, that gives you updates for the day, maybe show you the application of the day and good stuff like that. At the bottom though, you'll see a bunch of tabs. So they have a games tab now. And uh, this also gives you the, uh, you know, gives you a list of the newer games, popular games and all that good stuff right over here. Uh, if you want to go to the apps, you can tap on this. You go to the apps, and uh, then you get all these things, uh, updates that you have to perform on your phone, and you can also search for the apps. So as you can see, the interface uh, for the App Store has also changed, probably for the better. And of course, there's plenty of other things that have been refined, but these are some of the things that are highlights of the iOS 11. You know, the redesigned control center, the new Today screen, all that good stuff. And one more thing that I'm not going to be able to demonstrate, but I want to talk about because I like the idea, is obviously you have a setting called the uh, Do Not Disturb setting, which when you enable this, you don't get notifications. It blocks out the notifications. Uh, maybe you're working, uh, maybe you're sleeping. You do not want to get notified, so you turn on Do Not Disturb mode. What they did was they added a new Do Not Disturb while driving mode which actually is gonna automatically detect when you're driving your car and it's gonna ask you to activate that new do not disturb mode. And what's gonna happen is, as you're driving, you're not gonna get any notifications. The idea behind this is safety. So if you're preoccupied with messages and updates on your Facebook and stuff like that, and if you're trying to respond to these things when you're driving, uh, that could cause an accident. But with the, with the new mode, do not disturb while you're driving mode, they're, they're gonna be able to prevent these crazy accidents. Of course, if you don't want it, you don't have to use it, but the option is gonna be there, and it's got some neat features. Uh, hopefully, I'll be making some videos to demonstrate exactly how it works as I'm driving a car. Uh, right now, the phone is not moving. The phone has to detect that you're driving so it can actually activate that mode or even make the offer to you, all right? And of course, uh, in the Maps application, they made some refinements. Uh, you're not gonna see it right away, but this is the JFK International Airport. But uh, as you can see, they added much more detail to the airport itself. So you can actually uh, zoom in on the airport and see individual stores and the uh, you know, exit locations and stuff like that. For example, it says, for example, you can see the Terminal 4 right there, okay? So the same thing applies to some of the major airports and major uh, shopping malls. So if you actually go and search for a shopping mall on iOS 11, 
It's going to give you a detailed representation of the mall with the location and even the level of every store. So it's going to tell you that store is on the first level, uh, first floor or the second floor, and it's right here. You'll see it right on that map when you zoom in on it. So as you can see, that's quite a detailed uh, map of the actual airport, okay? So those are some of the highlights, guys. Uh, make sure you subscribe to Saki Tech for more iOS 11 videos and uh, give this video a big thumbs up. And if you do have any questions, comments, concerns, just drop them down below. I'll be making some more videos, so stay tuned. For now, have a fantastic day. And also let me know, how, what do you feel about, if you're an iPhone user, how do you feel about this update? Or if you're an Android user, does this mean anything to you? Just let me know down in the comments below uh, for the iOS 11 for the iPhone.